right, well, hello everyone. Welcome back to Camp Capstone. My name is Chris Wapan, and we are today interviewing Oda. Well, it's Andreas Odenhall, actually, right? But we go by Oda, correct? Right. <laughs> yeah, everybody calls me Oda, so that's my it's my nickname for ages now. <laughs> so that's uh, what everybody's calling me. So that's okay, Oda. All right, Oda works. Um, not, I mean. It looks like the English word ode, like as an ode to joy, but uh, oda yeah. would be correct. Excellent. No, it's it's the same word in German, actually. It's, oh, is it? It's like an, an ode to whatever you want to, to ode to. <laughs> <laughs> in, my, in my youth, it was always an ode to sins. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I remember youth. That, that was a little while ago. So... You basically, the first time I recall ever seeing your name, and I believe this was the first game that you actually published, was uh, was that La Granja? Um, yes. Yeah. Uh, so that was uh, with Michael Keller. And now you guys were a little crazy with that one because, you know, you kind of, from what I understand, and it certainly feels like this, you took a lot of elements from your favorite designers and decided to make a game of it. Is that what happened? Well, that's actually part, half part of it, because okay. um, what I like to do is um, I like to get inspired by the great ideas from other designers. And, and then I try to um, take elements from those games and the ones I liked, of course, and then shape them into something new, something that uh, is a little bit different. And well, it, it doesn't mean it's original or it's unique or something like this, but it's hopefully good. And it's it's a different version of what's in the old game in the in the other games. So I try to. Mm -hmm. Well, um, turn it into some of my own style, you can say. And um, that was the idea behind uh, La Grania when I was inspired by Glory to Rome, um, mm. where, which has a, a great card mechanism, a, the, a way of using cards in a multi-use way. And I liked that very much. And I hope uh, that I found some kind of variant uh, that is that stands by itself. Yeah, I think with uh, with multi-use cards, the there is if it's done well, I think it is very stressful because you don't know exactly what you want to use the card for because it's good for too many things. <laughs> yeah, uh, what I like in games is to make um, interesting decisions. That's what drives me in designing games mm -hmm. and. The it's brilliant about multi-use cards is that you have so many uh, decisions to make because every card has four different uh, things that they can turn into and you have not only to decide what it sh should become but you also have to decide what they should not become so what you're deciding against and uh, I think to me personally it's, it's a very um, interesting decision but I understand that's uh, very stressful for, for certain people because when you have five cards in your hand, you have 20 options. That's exactly. very much. I understand. And it's, it's hard to use it for one thing because generally you're giving up a good thing to get another good thing. And you're like, but I want to do both. <laughs> and that's usually uh, when I realize that the game is working and the game is good when... Uh, players start to curse while playtesting <laughs> and because they have so many good options and they have to decide uh, what option to take and that's normally oh, I, I don't like oh, I have to use this one <laughs> so when people get uh, get angry <laughs> I'm always uh, enjoyed by this the uh, the other thing I, I, I enjoy about I, I do enjoy it. it it causes stress but it's that good stress uh, the other thing I enjoy is that um, moving goods around and making goods and getting them to be the better goods like that's a very intricate little puzzle it's not just you have this stuff here you go you have to 
make the right moves to upgrade your goods and do all that. What was what inspired that chunk of it? Well, actually, well, I'm I'm a little bit of a cube pusher myself, so I like to uh, handle uh, wooden game components. You mm. can say that's what I. Um, started liking in games and so this comes kind of natural to me and you can see this also in my other designs uh, where Cooper Island is a cube pusher like uh, yeah it's it's perfectly uh, a perfect cube, cube pusher because you have to, all those little cubes to push around and then this is resource uh, value 4 and value 3 and so on and right. that's what I, I really like um, the the uh, What's behind the Lagrania uh, good this uh, good system was actually to have um, a very reduced kind of upgrading goods. Um, mm -hmm. Was a little bit inspired by my friend Uwe Rosenberg. He has some famous games where you have small uh, good chips, right. and when you upgrade them, you flip them over. And this was actually the first uh, I, I had in Lagrania as well. So when you had olives, you had a little uh, marker, um, a cardboard marker, and when you upgrade it, you just flipped it. Okay. And with Lagrania, it was the thing that most people said, oh, this is too close to a Rosenberg game. And then I had this idea of... Um, using um, this this uh, markers to to indicate uh, where it indicates what the good is and you can you can shift them around like this cube pushing that I like so much and this was the basic idea to change this because m many people said oh this is too close to a uh, <laughs> game yeah. I, I, I don't think that's a bad thing I think that's a compliment <laughs> Yes, yes, uh, true. I, I like I like his games very much, ex especially uh, Aura at Labora is one of right. my, my favorite favorite games, and that's uh, one of those games where you have to turn around many many chips. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, I have to. Uh, I haven't played that in quite a while because it, it was out of print for so long, and my my one friend is the only one who has it, so I don't get to play it as much as I'd like. But mm. the timing on that one's interesting for sure. Yes. So from La Granja, you went on to do Solaris Mission. So what was kind of the thought to, did it start out with that kind of a theme or did you just kind of make some stuff and then the theme came later? Okay, you want the whole background story of both games? Um, sure. Because they are both, con they are both connected. Um, it was when I met uh, Mike in Essen. Mm-hmm. I think it was 2009 when we met on the fair and we both uh, worked on the same booth for Hall Games. Mm -hmm. We were explaining uh, at the gates of Luoyang from Uwe Rosenberg, which got published this year. And uh, we got acquainted and started talking about our own ideas about designing games. And um, Mike approached me with one of his designs and said that he was some kind of stuck in the in the development. and. Uh, he asked me if I would take a look at it, <clears throat> and mm -hmm. uh, this this game was called uh, Dice for the Galaxy, and it was okay. uh, uh, um, space themed uh, roll your dice um, kind of game. Right. So I, I had a brief look at it, and I started uh, redesigning the whole game, and uh, halfway through it, I changed the theme to an agricultural theme. <laughs> So when I when I finally um, talked to him again, I said, "Okay, I, I managed to to work on your game, but uh, it's a different game now. We have two games now, <laughs> <laughs> because uh, this was uh, Lagrania on the other side and Dice for the Galaxy on the other side." And he said, "Okay, so let's be both designers of both games." And okay. then it was just the case. Of, so Lagrania was more like my game and Michael was the co-designer and uh, Solarius Mission Dice for the Galaxy became Solarius Mission uh, later and this was more my games and I was the co-designer because later after Lagrania was published because it became more serious uh, faster 
and got picked up by Spielworks. Um, after Lagrange was uh, published, we uh, decided to go deeper into Solaris mission again, and again Spielworks uh, wanted to publish it. So both game, both of our games that we uh, got back then were published. It was uh, very cool. Yeah, that's the so, story about both games. So in in the U.S., um, Spielworks is getting better because they're they're getting more relationships with U.S. publishers, but it's still very hard and we look at them as being like very good heavy games makers like they make typically if they make a game it's going to be one that kind of fits in my brain space were you mm. guys excited when they were the ones who ended up picking up Lagranha and then Solaris after that is that like to me that seems like a pretty big deal because I view them as a premier publisher of Good games like that well it was actually more like they picked us because oh. uh, I like to publish um, pictures of my prototypes on mm -hmm. social media and um, I knew Uli from because he lives close to me right uh, and when you get to know some people in the business you sometimes meet other people and so over uh, around the edge there was uh, contact to Uli and he wants uh, wrote an, an pers private message to me on Facebook and saying uh, this game of yours you're playtesting that looks very interesting do you want to show it to me and I said yeah of course certainly <laughs> and, um, but back then I uh, was only doing this for the for myself so it, I never had the expectation to get published and the only reason I went there was um, there is this guy. He's working for twenty more than twenty years in the in the business, and you better listen to a guy like this because he he, he can spread some wisdom, and that's why why I went there. He could help me with uh, making my game better, and I showed it to him. Uh, he in, invited me into his home, and it was very nice. And halfway through the play, he said, "Okay, um, I want you." To leave the game with me, I will take it to my playtesting rounds, and if they agree, if if the feedback is good, I will publish the game. And I thought, well, what? You want you want to have it? <laughs> I, I wasn't prepared for that, <laughs> and uh, I I don't know if I had a rule by then. I had to write one very quickly, but um, just a couple of weeks later, he said, "Okay, here's the contract. Uh, I wow. want to publish the game." Yeah. Um. And on the other hand, I was a Spielworks fan myself uh, for some time back then because I really loved uh, the game from Thomas Spitzer, uh, Rusche Fahrt, which mm -hmm. got published by Capstone Games later uh, under the name The, Ru the Ruhr. Mm -hmm. I don't know if yep. you... Or Ohio River. And um, so I was pretty excited about uh, getting picked up by uh, Spielworks and also having the opportunity to work with Harald Liske, who is a brilliant illustrator, and I always loved his uh, his art. Mm -hmm. And especially at Spielworks, uh, Harald can actually um, be very creative. In a, in a way, he could not be with a bigger publisher. So uh, right. he, in my personal opinion, he made very, very good uh, art for the game. So it was very exciting for me. Yeah, it's it's definitely one that takes you not too long to understand and the iconography is very clear and it's very pretty to look at. So all those things are kind it's... of what, what makes art work for a game, right? Yeah. Outstanding. So fast forward a little bit and then last year uh, you were able to release Cooper Island um, with uh, Frosted Games, I believe, over there is who did yes. it there. Um, and right. again, Frosty Games is, seems to, everything they put out that comes over our way, at least, I love, like, because they tend to, to pick the slightly heavier, more in-depth things and have good production. Um, what was the design process for Cooper Island? Well, um, Cooper, uh, Lagrania and Solaris Mission were already uh, both picked up at a very early stage. 
mm -hmm. and only takes some time to develop the games uh, and give some feedback to the designers and you, you should look a little bit here and a little bit here and make it a little bit shorter and stuff like this and uh, he contracts the games uh, very early okay. and it was the same with um, with Frosted Games uh, the contract we did was signed uh, 2016 mm -hmm. already and we took much time to develop the game uh, yeah for two years and then uh, Frosted Games uh, hired a well-known editor from he it's Victor Kobilke from uh, he was before that he was uh, at Eggert Spiele and uh, Victor Half a year, half a year before the game got published, Victor took the last steps to really polish the game and uh, do the final, well, ten to five percent um, right. until it would already be published. So he changed a little, uh, a, a few small things, and he made everything well rounded. Um, and what, what my personal favorite is about the game that he was able to think of a way to produce this layout. For the board game for the game board right because it's all a, a huge puzzle and it uh, would was very uh, difficult to find a good layout and could also be produced and also work with all player counts and right the, he did a very brilliant brilliant job on this in my personal opinion because the table presence of the game is, is stunning it it really is and it um if you've never seen it, it has like the central board that y'all work on, but then it has small islands out the side. So it scales yeah. based on the amount of people, how many kind of islands you add to the game. So you yeah, know. every player has his own peninsula. And if you're right. playing it with four players, you need four peninsulas on this island. And when you're playing it with also uh, only two players, you have two peninsulas. And the puzzle that was layouted by Victor uh, makes it possible so that the game board always fits and that's uh, brilliant yeah it it really makes it a lot of fun it's a it was a great game to demo last year because it has a lot of table presence with the way it builds up and the layers and the way all the cubes and everything it it yeah. also you know i love this being able to build something because i like tile laying i don't mm. want that to be my whole game mind you but i like that it's the production component is is very well managed. I think it's uh, it's well done. What what kind of where did that design idea come from? Because I it's one of my favorite parts. Oh, it's actually another um, thing that I got influenced by another game. Hmm. Um, there is an old game. It is called Antics, uh, published by the Fragua Brothers. It's a it's a Britain based oh. publisher, I guess. Very yeah. small publisher. Okay. And they also do very uh, small print runs, only 1,000 games per print run, and that's it. They, they don't uh, do more games. And uh, Antics was a game I played, I, I don't know exactly <laughs> how long it is ago. I think it was published around about 2011 or 12, something like this. And this game had a very uh, unique and very cool and also thematic um, action selection mechanism where you build an anthill okay uh, from from double hex tiles uh, and you get different layers and the clue on antics was that if you want to perform an action you had to put a worker on your anthill and depending on the level uh, of the action you could perform the action multiple times so if it was on the third layer or in the third level, you could perform the action three times. So you were trying to uh, build this anthill to get better and better actions. And um, my idea was to take this, being the cube pusher I am, I wanted to use it for resource uh, building. Sure. Or to, to gain resources. And that's how the idea got uh, started. So when you have um, a wood, on level three, it's uh, the resources value. Fee uh, what did I say? Of value three, the the level is right. three, so the value of the cube is three. 
I, I really like it. And I think the, you know, the building rules and the way things have to go up and what they give you next to, there's a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of, you can feel really smart if you build well. Like, I think that you can make some really big moves and you can build rapidly if you wait a few turns and kind of set it up, which I just, I, I like all the things it does in my brain. So thank you for that. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is always something that is also um, in, very important to me because you can see that you built something and it's independent from how you uh, score in the game because there's only one player who can win the game and all the other players would be disappointed uh, after right. the game is done but if you have something that you can see you you built this island you explored it you had your own buildings to put on the levels and that's very rewarding if you see it even if you maybe come in second or third i don't <laughs> you don't care because you had a lot of fun right you, you get tired of losing all the time, but at least if you feel smart once or twice along the way, <laughs> then, it, then it's fun. So, yeah, it's hard to master. So, so I think I know the story, but I'd like to hear it from you, and so you can tell everybody, where did the, uh, the name for Cooper Island come from? Yeah, it, it's actually uh, an idea from my, from my wife. Um, she's always the first one to playtest my games and she's always full of ideas mm -hmm. and most uh, many of the ideas that went into Cooper Island were actually uh, by my wife and I was just picking them up and designing them uh, into the game um, she was the one who uh, well, be before it was Cooper Island we had the idea of uh, making the game uh, about Roanoke Island okay you, I don't know if you're familiar with this. It's uh, the first settlement. Uh, that mysteriously the... disappeared. <laughs> yes, that mysteriously disappeared, right. Uh, the problem was um, that was not so good for, uh, for a game that tells a story because when the, uh, the settlement disappears, you, you don't have a game anymore. <laughs> you, have to start up, you have to start from, uh, from the top. And so later we decided that uh, we could not really um, do the theme because it would be too uh, generic and not fitting okay. to the story of, of the Roanoke Island. So when this, was, uh, this theme was gone, she, she said, um, okay, so let's name the island after a dog. And uh, she, uh, one day, um, Matthias from Frosted Games, he's the owner and uh, editor of the publisher, he was here at our home to playtest the game. And my wife uh, was also around and she talked him into it like <laughs> she, only she could. <laughs> and we were very happy and very lucky that uh, Matthias uh, thought uh, that this was a cool idea. And also uh, that you could um, tell a personal story with uh, using this theme and actually uh, the text in, in the rule book that uh, introduces the theme was mm -hmm. uh, written by Victor Kobilka and he did such a great job of writing this little heart heart heartwarming story. And they also, um, and a very big thank you to the, to the publisher that they printed also the story of Cooper um, that I wrote uh, into the credits. Nice. Uh, so it was very, very cool, very personal um, game, and I think this is only possible because it's such a small publisher. Well, they they are getting bigger, but um, it's very small, very personal. It's it's almost a friendship uh, between designer and publisher, and um, I think there are not many publishers who would have gone with this story and so the game became very personal to me and my wife as well and uh, this is a very cool thing that's amazing i i loved it when i first heard it and read it and i'm like that's you know we get so many bland euros that have like they have a lot of playability and they're very fun but they don't have that kind of personal soul that i think you know you kind of get with cooper and and He's half the cover. He's big. <laughs> like, yeah. There's a boat, but he's there. He's big. So it's amazing. I, I really love it. 
Um, yeah, so. but we are the only ones who have the real uh, starting player. So <laughs> when when we're playing the game and we change the starting player, Cooper has to come <laughs> sit next to me. So <laughs> oh, that's such a joke. At least you could keep track of it that way. Um, yeah. But, you know, there you go. If you want a unique first player marker, I am sure like we, you know, if we have it, had Essen this year, maybe little stuffed Cooper dolls, I think, would be, uh, I, I can oh, see it. you would make my wife so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I could totally see it. I could totally see it. So so you kind of came out of the gate swinging with La Granja. Uh, totally loved it straight out of the gate. Did not feel like somebody's first design or first published design i should say um what's on the future because if if this is what you you've done so far i can only imagine that it's going to continue to grow and get better um actually um because i'm doing this as a side job i, mm -hmm. I have a normal day job uh, being an assistant for a wheelchair driver so this is uh, a 40 hours a week uh, day right. job and um, when you're having such uh, um, work intense uh, side job like designing a game and it took us four years to develop design and develop the game True. it was very very exhausting and after the game was published um, and I know this from other designers and publishers as well uh, if you put so much work into into one game you fell into a, a whole uh, after it was mm -hmm. published and for a few months I wasn't able to put, to to come up with any idea or I, I actually didn't want to and um, when this was gone uh, and I felt the motivation to start designing games again um, Corona came around mm -hmm. suddenly I was uh, having very much time on my own um, not being able to go to uh, gaming events, gaming nights, or something like this. So uh, I had actually much uh, time to be creative and put more games into motion, and I'm working on several uh, games right now. Um, yeah. Awesome. But none, but none of them are really in a stage where you can uh, show stuff around. It's just... The first playtest started on, I think, three or four of my games, and yeah, uh, normally it takes a couple of years, um, sure. if I'm lucky, to get published again. I, that's This is something you can never know. I, I have the opportunity because I'm known now, and uh, but yeah, let's, let's just see. Uh, maybe the game's stuck. It's possible. Well, I mean, I would rather have one game every three or four years that's solid, good, right out of the gate like these two have been than just churn out one a year and hope every third one is good, right? Like, I'd rather... That's, yeah, that's I, I like, to, <laughs> I like to, to enjoy games more than two or three times, so um, that's just what I always try to, to design into my games, that you have a huge replayability so you can play it 15 to 20 times without being bored and that's something i like in games so i can um, play them so often and always find uh, different approaches into the, the strategies or something new you can find still after so many plays mm -hmm. uh, this is something i really like so designing games like this takes time so what kind of uh what kind of games get you excited to play um you know for me i like big heavy meaty things 18xx like i i like all that stuff like what's some of your favorite things that you like to play yeah um well the first the game that got me really into this, uh, gaming back then it was Puerto rico okay uh, and it's one of my all-time classics, and this was the game that turned me into a geek. Um, but uh, the game I love the most right now is actually a brilliant design. Uh, it's, it's called Underwater Cities. And that game, well, has so much replayability and so much depth, and we played it uh, over 120 times by now. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, it's Vladimir, really, really 
Good. I love the way Vladimir Suchi's brain works because I like that. Like Last Will's great shipyard is still, you know, delightful. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's actually uh, Underwater Cities is a very good example for for the type of games I like because uh, the game has a strategic approach. Mm -hmm. There's something that you can plan with because you have the action spaces, and um, but you have also have um, some randomness in the cards, uh, and also a strategic approach and randomness that is more like a salt and pepper in the game. And that's the kind of games I like uh, the most, where you have a mixture and of this these elements. Right. And it's not just, I'm waiting for this one card to come out. It's coming out later. You may yeah. never see it, because the deck may never get that deep. So. Yeah, uh, and also you always have something you can rely on, because the actions on the board, they never change. This is right. something you can plan with. Uh, it depends on the cards you uh, draw, what way you want to uh, go. And mm -hmm. that's a very, very tactical approach. And also the game is very strategic as well. And that's a perfect blend, Yeah, to, at least to me, at least to me. I like the games where you don't get to say, I think I'm going to do this this time before you even sit down at the table. I like it when you can kind of sit at the table, get your cards and then say, all right, I can do these three things. I'm probably going to do this. And then this is plan B. And before you know it, that's completely out the window because it didn't go your way and you're on to plan F by now. <laughs> yes, true. <laughs> Absolutely love it. So if there's a young designer out there or somebody who has an idea in their head, how do you, how would you encourage them to get it out and get it published or what do you think should be some first steps that they should take? Um, yeah, I can only um, tell what what uh, my friends and, and mentors that I had when I was starting designing games gave me, and that's uh, you have to do it. You have to do. You have to get there from getting the idea from your head, and you mm -hmm. have to, at the table, and you have to make the game. This is a very hard uh, thing to do, at least for me, because you have to motivate yourself to finally get into motion. And this is something uh, I struggled along uh, with, but it actually... Well, I was uh, talking to Uwe Rosenberg back then, and he said, you can think about all the games in your head, but if you never sit down and, and make them, you w won't get anywhere. Right. And that's very true, I think. Um, and also, uh, the way I think about game design is that I, I'm always uh, comparing it to some kind of hip-hop. You know, um, hip-hop artists, they take older songs and they use the records and scratch them and make new uh, songs out of them. They become unique. Mm -hmm. And they're not copying something. They are getting inspired by older songs and they turn it into something new, into something of their own style. So don't be afraid to uh, get inspired by other games. Uh, take something that you like and turn it into your own design. And I, I am proud of um, something like this because... Um, after La Grania was published, I was uh, approached by a young designer and he was asking if he could use uh, the card mechanism from Lagrania, and I said, "Yeah, of course, fire away because it's not mine. It's, uh, <laughs> I, <laughs> you can do whatever you want with it. Uh, just make sure that you use it in your own way." And uh, the game uh, uh, was published already. So Captains of the Gulf is also published oh, by yeah. Spielworks, and it and it has also the way of you tucking your cards under your player board. And it's a brilliant design by Jason Dinger. And so this is the nature of game mechanisms, I think. And that's something I like in games. It's like, uh, yeah, uh, mechanisms evolve over time. Right. And I think that's, uh, that's cool. Excellent. Well, I really appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to talk with us and kind of share your story. Um, this has been great getting to know you. I mean, I have 
literally all your games sit upstairs on my shelf, which is, I can't say that for many people, but all yours are there. So thank you for giving me many of hours of entertainment. Thank you very much for inviting me, and it was a pleasure to meet you as well. Awesome. So thanks a lot for being here, and we, we look forward to whatever comes next when it comes. <laughs> no, no need to yeah, rush it. Hopefully. Good things take time. You know, as somebody who's recently getting into barbecue, I know this. It takes time to make good things. So that's completely fair. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Excellent. So have a great evening. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed getting to know the designer of Cooper Island by Capstone Games a little bit better. And uh, the new solo expansion is also out. Thank you for working on that and getting it out. And uh, we hope to talk to you soon. Thank you. Have fun playing Cooper Island. <laughs> I will. Thank you all very much. Have a good night.